Listen to the jack stand YouTube mechanics out there. They know it best. <laughs> right? How many of those channels have you seen? Oh, I know the best. They got their connector right up there on top of the transmission. I remember correctly, it's a long one. And there's a sensor over there. Dude, that thing came right off. O2 sensor, when you're changing it, it's commonly a 7 8 Commonly. Or a 22 is pretty close. Oh yeah, we got movement. That's awesome. And the connector is up here. Just don't burn yourself in the exhaust. Happens when you have to do the car shuffle, you get burned. The guy who did this is dead. Died. The guy who put this pipe on. He died. The guy who put that sensor in. Died. It's a shame, man. Let's do what you can do when you can. Because one day that's gonna be you. That came out pretty easy too. The connector, pretty good. It's only a three wire. Is this thing hot? Mm, not so bad. Not so bad. This could have been a lot worse. Shall we? Oh man, look at this thing. It's like coated. Oh well, we're changing it. It don't look too hot. I've changed other ones, and this thing looks like pretty uh, clogged up. Probably from the oil. Yeah. We'll burn rubber after this. Using a quality ASF upside down. Hopefully, I'm not covering the microphone again. If I am, I'm just going to fast forward it. I'm trying to make a how to change professionally your O2 sensor video. Again, the people on jack stands on YouTube make the best videos. I was watching some guy's video about a TBI truck running rich. It's like the information this guy is pulling out, putting out there is so wrong. I'm using horrible terms. It has like 300 something thousand views on it. it has 60,000 subscribers, you know, and my stuff. Nobody watches it. But it is what it is. It's a Denso sensor, if I didn't already mention that. Made in Japan. So now my truck is an import. It's a high quality import worth more money. It's a Toyota. Look, they even put string on it. Always compare the length of the wire with your new one. Save the connector too, that's a cool connector. It has those pins you can pop out the terminal release tool. What the hell is this? Some Japanese stuff. Maybe Gas Sub Wild on YouTube knows something about that. How they package these. Ease the same. You can also cut the old wires off. The heat sleeve tubing is pretty cool to keep in the hoard. I see that sensor is shot. I actually have another one of these coming in OS. See, they changed the style of it. This is the new Denzel style with the holes. This is what it used to be. It has like these weird little slits in it. But I actually, I think I scored another one for like 50 bucks. So, I like to have extra parts. Try not to like knock the sensor around too bad. You know, don't put that tip in a bad spot. And it comes with uh, copper anti-seize too. Put a little around the threads. I think uh, we're gonna fish the wire first and then put the sensor in. Just put a small bit of anti seize, you don't need to use the whole packet. Like the guy with 300 something thousand views on this channel, he's doing spark plugs. He just coats the whole spark plug with anti seize. <laughs> Leave it disconnected. Sometimes different style connectors, they're a little softer plastic and they're like super hard to get on. But it's on. Well, weather pack connectors. We have to use the proper term or else we get yelled at. But just make sure that wire is not hitting nothing. That O2 sensor wire that's in excellent position. It probably was. Eh, maybe. Oh, something with that wire. Maybe it was on. Um, Connected to something at one point in time, but not anymore. Alright, that should be all set. O2 sensor save money. Fuel filter, change that. I want to put a new rear brake. Old truck, not so bad though. Flowmaster. Alright, let's get out of here. That's how you change O2 sensor though. It's pretty damn easy. I'm going to get this thing off the jacks too, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the battery, the negative, for about a minute, just so the computer clears. It's going to clear that O2 sensor code that's stored, it's going to clear the EST code that's stored, and 
it's going to um, restore the block learn mode. It's the number I was given, the 108 and the 121. It should be around like 120, 128. That's about a stichometric, what is that, 14.721. That's a test question, by the way. It was when we were going to school. Kids go, how'd you know that off the head? How'd you know? I don't know. I was young. Oh uh, yeah, the more you do this stuff, it comes back to your head, you know, and then you forget it when you sit inside and watch YouTube videos all day. But yeah, you want that. It's called a block learn mode, or uh, it could be fuel counts, they can call it. It's usually that number. And then the lower the number, the richer it is. Higher the number from 128, well, higher the number from 128, the leaner it is, the lower it is from 128, the richer it is. That's how you know. So you just look at that, you know, your engine's running like shit. Should be around, you know, it could be in the 130s, it's okay. You shouldn't venture too far off. Oh, I need that again. But you do that, and then it'll run nice. Some good scan tools, they might have a resetting procedure for the scan tool. I'm not sure if you could do it with OBD1. Probably not. Alright, let's let this thing down. It's a crucial tip, though. You don't see that on YouTube. I do not see that. So I mentioned it. Oh, watch that video when I changed the battery bolts on this truck. It's an old video. The dislikes it has. It's insane. It's a simple video. I'm showing people how to change those little bolts. They just push right out because they get stripped. Not the 516s get stripped. This gets stripped when you're a moron and use the wrong size socket. The threads get stripped out over time, you know, after changing like six or so batteries over the vehicle's life. But yeah, the dislikes it has. Unbelievable. I'm just trying to show people how to do stuff and they give you a flack for it. People are evil. Never gonna get it. Don't put that in the right spot. Uh, yeah, should be good to go. Rolls better already. Yeah, right. I reset the ECM. Cool people are gonna start screaming now, going, I came here to be quiet. And this kid's got this truck all loud in here. Changing O2 sensors. It cost you $300 at the shop, and I did it for 40 something bucks. This is what, a three wire heated sensor. Heated. That means it gets hot. There's a little heating element. If you have one wire, not heated. Heated lasts longer than not heated. So everything seems to be running slow though now. O2 is fluctuating. Fuel counts are better. It's not pig rich. TPS voltage went down. Look at that. It gets hotter. It goes down. And the content 190. What is it? Idle. Computer could be running slow too. It doesn't get the data very fast. It's leaning it out. And then again, I just reset the, um, the ECM too by disconnecting the battery, so it always runs a little freakish. I don't know, this is Data Master, if anyone ever heard of this. Alright, when I say it, it goes on. OG Sensor ready. Bad shutdown. What the hell does that mean? Bad shutdown. I don't know. It's apparently, you could data log with this and they can come up with like a new uh, custom tune. That's the deal. It's not that great. Free scan works better, but it doesn't work on this ECM on this truck. If you had like a better tech tool, you would see, you can graph it and whatnot. This kind of sucks. But that's all we got. So that's how you change your O2 sensor.